I am concerned about the erraticness of the dollar. The dollar is up, the dollar is down. We print a lot of dollars. The dollar gets devalued. That is really the concern. If people think the gold price up and down is a reflection of something wrong with gold, no. I say it is something wrong with the dollar. Ron Paul. Welcome to EOS Weekly. We've got an important show for you today where we're going to talk about what's wrong with the current BP payment model and we'll propose an alternative model that might work better. As you all know, there's been a big drop in the EOS token price where it's dropped down below the $3 market times. Currently, at the time of this recording, it's trading just above $3 a token. The reason why this is important is because of the direct link between token price and BP pay. The two are directly correlated. And as BP pay goes down with the token price, the BPs have fewer and fewer resources to put towards their extracurricular activities, the projects that are helping to fuel the growth of EOS. Like a person experiencing hypothermia, where the blood leaves the extremities and collects in the torso so as to protect the vital organs, EOS enters into a similar hypothermic state when the price drops to extreme lows. BPs need a certain amount of income just to do the basics, and in the EOS world, the basics equate to infrastructure. The infrastructure will be the last thing to suffer from a lowering BP pay. But other things, like headcount and special projects, are going to be on the chopping block when the take-home pay gets too low. The point we want to make in this episode is that the current BP payment structure is not ideal. You could even go so far as to say it's broken. In the EOS white paper, Block 1 didn't specify how exactly block producer pay would be calculated. It just had this general statement that the software may be configured to enforce a cap on producer awards at 5% inflation. So the details were still pretty vague back when this white paper was written. But then in the Dawn 4.0 announcement, which was published on May 4th, 2018, about a month or so before the mainnet launch, the ByteMaster for the first time clarified the plans for block producer pay. He called for a static number of 1% annual inflation to go towards the BPs. What this static 1% number means is that the value of BP pay is linear. When the EOS token price goes up, the amount earned by the BPs goes up with it. When the price goes down, the BP pay goes down too, always linearly. One of the good things about having a relationship like this is that the BPs are incentivized to add value to the EOS token. They're going to work hard to bring value to the token. The higher the token price goes, the more the BPs get paid. This is a good thing. This is tokenomics 101. Incentives are aligned. The opposite of this would clearly be a bad thing if BPs were incentivized to make the token price go down. We definitely would not want that. Back when this 1% inflation number was selected, which was likely in April or early May of 2018, prior to the Dawn 4.0 announcement, during this time, the EOS token price was trading at around $18. Today, at $3, it's about one-fifth of that. And 1% worked pretty well back when the price was in this $18 realm. The BPs were making a decent wage up here. But when the price drifts away from the sweet spot up here, we start to run into issues, no matter which direction the price moves. Having BP pay tied to token price in a linear model like this is extreme. It's too extreme. When token prices go way down or way up, we start to notice the flaws in this model. On the high end, BP pay starts to hit astronomical numbers as soon as the token price gets in the vicinity of $100 or higher. And on the low end, the BP pay could reach levels that would deny BPs enough income to even keep the basic operations running. What's happening right now with the price at around $3 is that we are starting to get our first glimpse of just how drastic, how unforgiving the current model is. So what is fundamentally wrong with the current model? Why are we seeing such dramatic swings in BP pay like this? At the most basic level, the issue we're running into here is that linear models like this rarely do a good job at modeling what's happening in the real world. For the vast majority of things occurring in nature in the real world, 
exponential models are better. They're more accurate. Very rarely will you find a linear model that accurately portrays anything in nature. So what we're getting at here is that we might want to consider replacing our nice straight lines here with some lines that are a bit more curvy, like this. What we're suggesting is that by switching to an exponential model, like the lines drawn out here, we could make it so that when the token price drops, the percent inflation goes up to compensate for that lower price. The BPs will still take less home when the EOS token price is low, but it won't be as drastic as in the linear model. The reverse is also true with an exponential model like this. As the token price goes up towards the extremes, we eventually want the BP pay to level off, as is shown here. In the linear model, BP pay goes towards infinity along with the token price. If we don't change anything and stick with our current 1% inflation model, then when the EOS token price does go up to say $100, $200, $300, the BP pay will start reaching exorbitant numbers. And you can rest assured that when this happens, the community will step in and vote on a referendum to lower BP pay. They will want to lower that 1% number. So here's the question. If we, the community, are willing to lower the inflation percentage when the price goes way up, shouldn't we also be willing to raise the percentage when the price goes way down? If we stick with our oversimplistic, hard-coded, linear approach to inflation, we'd have some jagged changes in our charts, jumping around whenever a referendum on BP pay passes. But it's not ideal for us to rely on referendum voting every time we need to adjust BP pay. It's too slow for one thing. The token price changes fast, and the referendum process currently takes a minimum of four months. Four months is way too slow for this type of thing. There's also the issue of voter fatigue, which we're surely to run into at some point. So down the road, when we do go to try to change BP pay via referendum, it might be challenging to drum up enough support for it every time. What we want is a better model in the first place, a proactive solution instead of a reactive solution. The BPs deserve a bit of predictability. They have enough uncertainty in their salaries already with the constant shifting in the rankings. The BPs deserve an exponential chart, a smooth ride that gives them gradual and predictable changes to their pay, adjusting naturally to the token price without delay and without human involvement every time. This way the BPs can plan ahead accordingly and they don't have to account for sudden, abrupt changes to their pay based on mob rule. Okay, so this would be a good time to unveil the solution that we've come up with. We've come up with an equation that we think would give us the ideal BP payment structure. So without further ado, here's the equation. It's sort of beautiful, right? But what does it mean? Well, let's break it down. We start with the price of an ounce of gold. We divide the price of gold by 50 times the EOS price. Then we take the square root of all that. That's it. This will give us the inflation percentage for BP pay at a given time. The gold price and EOS price are our variables. We'll plug in the current values for those at a given time when we want to calculate the target inflation number. The 50 number here is a constant. We'll explain our reasoning behind this equation in a moment, but first let's see how this equation would work in practice. Using today's gold price of about 1,250 US dollars per ounce, let's run the numbers through our equation to see what the inflation percentage comes to. As you can see, when the EOS price is low, the inflation percentage rises up, well above 1% in some cases, to compensate for the low price. And as the price increases, the inflation percentage drops down, eventually going below the 1% number. If we were to plot these same numbers on a graph, we'd see the curved line like what we were talking about earlier. Okay, now let's compare the annual pay. Let's compare the current 1% model with what the BPs would get with our new formula. What you see is the new model softens out the edges a bit. In the current 1% model, which we looked at earlier, we see that when the price gets outside of a certain habitable range, 
the BP pay goes extremely low and extremely high. But in the new model, we never get all that extreme. Yet, we still maintain the incentive that Taylor Swift likes so much. The BPs still make more money as the token price goes up. But the change in BP pay is a bit more palatable. It doesn't go to the ridiculous extremes at either end. So which one do you like better, A or B? A or B? Let's plot the annual pay on a chart now like we did earlier with the raw inflation number to see what the curve looks like. So as you can see, we get that upward curve that we were going after, where it flattens out more and more the higher the price goes. So what we're seeing is that our formula does in fact give the curves that we were aiming for. Now, let's briefly explain the reasoning behind the formula. To start with, we needed something in the real world, something to gauge the value of the EOS token, something to compare it to. Otherwise, how do we know if the token value is moving up or down? By looking at the ratio of gold to EOS, we get a true indicator as to how the value of EOS is changing, whether the true value is going up or down. This is what we're after. We need this so we can decide whether to increase or decrease the BP inflation percentage. That's what this equation does. It keeps the BP pay pegged to an extent to the price of gold, while still maintaining the incentive for BPs to add value to the EOS token. We don't want to lose that incentive. None of this would work without something like gold. If we tried to just pick a fiat currency like the US dollar, it would be short-sighted. All fiats, as, as we all know, are subject to inflation, the US dollar included. The US dollar has lost 98% of its purchasing power since the creation of the Federal Reserve in 1913. The value of gold is always stable. It's the value of fiat currencies, which change in relation to gold, that gives us the illusion of gold's value changing. This is what Ron Paul was explaining in our opening quote. By dividing the gold price by the EOS price, we cancel out the price units, which could be in any fiat currency. Fiat units are canceled right out of the equation. You could put the gold and EOS prices in terms of the Chinese yuan, the British pound, you name it. It doesn't matter because the fiat units, units always cancel out. All that matters is the ratio of gold to EOS. Moving on to the number 50 here. This is just a constant used to calibrate the equation to get it to spit out an inflation percentage that is about right. We could always fine tune this 50 number. If you want to see how this constant impacts the calculation, here's the inflation percentages with the constant set to 40, 50, and 60. The 40 value is the most generous of the three. The 60 value is the least generous. We included the price of $18 intentionally in these charts. This is because the EOS token was trading in the $18 range when block one selected the static 1% number. And as you can see, all three of these are fairly close to that 1%. We don't have to get the constant perfect on the first try. We could fine tune this over time via referendum vote. Eventually, we could use oracles to get the gold and EOS price and update the BP inflation percentage in real time. We could constantly recalculate our equation here to keep BP payment forever current. But it's going to be challenging to implement a real-time solution like that. To start with, we could manually calculate it and update it every few weeks or so. Even if we only did it every few weeks, it'd be way better than the static 1% that we have right now. Of course, this is just an idea at the moment, but if the community seems to like this idea, we at EOS Weekly volunteer to write this up in a formal proposal and submit it through the referendum system. Some referendum proposals for BP pay changes will be politically sensitive. BPs will be shy to support a blatant flat increase to the 1%. What we're hoping for is that BPs will not shy away from what we've proposed here. What we've proposed in this video is a fair solution to the BP pay issue. Hopefully BPs will support us in this initiative and help spread the word on this. If the BPs and the wider community have a positive reaction and seem supportive of this idea, we will move forward with the referendum proposal. We need to have a sense of urgency around this issue. If this bear market continues for very long, it could put a serious dent in the momentum that we've been building ever since the launch. So let's fix this. Let's prove to the world that the community can in fact change things for the better.
in a decentralized way. That's it for this week's episode. Thanks for hearing us out on this. Please add a comment with your thoughts or suggestions, and we'll see you next week, right here on EOS Weekly.